I don't have a rich um, history of activism. I was just told one day that I've got a big mouth and I need to use it. Well, I deliberated and then I said, okay, well, why don't I just go through how I got involved and, um, and why I got involved and perhaps what, what you could do. My talk is entitled WTF is West Connects and what difference could I possibly make? Now, um, I recall the first time I heard about West Connects. Um, it was over dinner and my partner said to me, have you heard of this thing called West Connects? And I said, yes, it's a silly tunnel because it's going to go into our suburb. It's going to be all right. It'll be deep underground, out of sight, and I'm sure they're intelligent enough so our house doesn't fall into it. <laughs> and she says, like Lane Cove. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sure they've learnt since that, so don't worry about it. It, it, it will be fine. And uh, where will the exhaust stacks be going up? And I said, uh, okay, well, what, what do you want me to do? Because I'd like you to come to a West Connect meeting and, and find out a little bit about it. Now, we've been lucky. Uh, we are Haverfield residents. We are at, um, our house is still, still standing. Our neighbour's house is still there. Um, our parks and our street hasn't, have not undergone massive deforestation yet. Um, and I guess we were lucky that we bought in the opposite um, end to Josepha. Um, it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare, that, that end of, um, of Haverfield. Um, so anyway, off I went to the uh, West Connect session, and uh, I can tell you it's a total waste of time. Um, I got very little information. The questions I asked actually made the people uncomfortable. And um, I left there with um, feelings of uh, despair. There's nothing I can do about this. And the other one was um, hope. Well, I hope it doesn't affect us. Now... I looked at their plans, and on the, on the way back home, I said to myself, this is the rational part of my brain talking, um, perhaps it's too early. They haven't locked their plans in, and um, it, they just need more time. And then the other part of my brain said, wake the fuck up. They're acquiring houses, and they've got bulldozers on the ground pointing. They don't know what they're doing, and they're starting. And then the other voice in the car spoke on the way home. And um, she said, what do, you think of, what do you think? And I said, well, to me, it looks like a dressed-up turd. <laughs> They're going to cover it with as much glossy paper as possible that by, by the end of the time when they actually um, take away the paper, the stench will be gone or masked and it'll be too late. Exactly. That's why we, she meant me, need to get involved. And I said, seriously, what the hell can I do? She looks at me and says, look, I want you to go to more meetings. I want you to question the people like you did tonight. Not because they're going to give you an answer, because they won't, but because you have a way of asking questions that embarrasses people and <laughs> points out their shortcomings. And publicly, in a public forum, that's a powerful thing. It would actually look at holes in their stupid project and engage others in the audience. And maybe you can make a difference by getting others involved. I said, I really don't think it's going to make a bit of difference, but I'll go to one more meeting. So she arranges one more meeting, and um, that meeting was at the Enmore Theatre. Packed to the rafters, 2,000 people plus, and they're going to do a presentation on the interchange they're going to put down at the St. Peter's um, old dump. Now, we headed down straight after work in our 9 to 5 suits, and we took a spot near the front, and we settled in for our feeding of waffle and spin. And um, then they started asking questions. I put my hand up. I, I didn't know what I was going to ask at that time, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but, but I wanted to get in. <laughs> and um, most of the questions in that, uh, that night were asked by local community members, and they were all answered in much the same way. Think of the wider benefits. Uh, we're building tomorrow Sydney. We need infrastructure. This is the missing link. It will solve traffic congestion. Needless to say, there was a lot of booing that night. Finally, they've had enough of getting abused by the community, and um, they said, last question. And Dennis Cliche looks around and says, that gentleman down there in the front, the one with the suit on. <laughs> that was me. Now, had they skipped me, I could have gone home, 
telling my partner what a stupid idea this was, and found solace in my friend's despair and hope, and my new one, denial. But they pointed at me and things changed. It was probably because I was in a suit, I was probably the most conservatively dressed person in Newtown that night. Anyway, they handed me the microphone, and I asked, and this is basically what I asked that night, there are a lot of concerned people here tonight, and it seems to me that the only thing you have it is unwavering belief that the project will transform our community and solve Sydney's congestion. Now, I can probably surmise that there were near identical statements made when the M4, M5 and the Eastern Distributor were proposed. Yet, you listen to the radio in the morning and you get some insight because there are some words I keep hearing, avoid, slow and delay. It seems to define that these motorways are clogged. Didn't Einstein say that if you repeat the same thing over and over again and expect a different result that you... is a sign of insanity? Do you actually have a question? <laughs> yes, yes I do, yes I do. Look, this meeting is about seeking community feedback. You stated that the EIS will soon be released, apparently addressing all the community concerns and traffic modelling included, included that will to show that this is the right solution and this the perfect location. However, I'm confused. Now, I know I'm not as intelligent as the people up on the stage, but I was always told to do my due diligence before I bought something. It seems to me that you have chosen a convenient location, the vacant spot down the road, the old St. Peter's dump, you've created an exit ramp, you're building a spaghetti junction, you're connecting it to every road nearby and close, and now, only now are you doing an, an, a, a, an, a study to make sure this is the right choice. Can you see how your EIS may be perceived by the community as a fictional document that uh, is nothing more here to prove that you've made the right choice? Look, let me help you. You don't need your EIS. Come on down to East uh, Edgeware Road, Euston Road and King Street next Saturday morning with me. Have a look around. We'll take some selfies at the uh, bottleneck in the background. And uh, it will make it apparent to you that putting an exit ramp here when everything is already clogged is ludicrous. I mean, what you're saying is more traffic will solve traffic. It doesn't make sense to me. And before he said, I said, okay, okay, don't worry. Look, it's all about community feedback and I want to help you. I want to help you with the community feedback. So I turned to the audience and said, okay, let's have a show of hands if you believe that this project is well thought out, will solve our congestion and is a benefit to our community. You can hear the cicadas down at Sydney Park in the background, honestly. <laughs> and then I said, okay, Let's have a show of hand if you think this is an ill-conceived project, brings no benefits to that community, and will only exacerbate congestion. I got a standing ovation. <laughs> I turned to Dennis and said, there's your feedback. I assume you'll be incorporating that into your EIS. <laughs> anyway, I was, I was told to sit down. The night, the night ended, and, I, and, and walking out, I was uh, approached by an anti-West Connects group, asking if I wanted to join to help. I don't know what I was going to do, but I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can help. And the option of telling my partner that uh, this was a stupid idea had long passed. As for Dennis, he actually never turned up to any more community events. Now, I don't know if I had any, any part of that, but if I did, great. Um, he delegated to Peter Jones. He's the project director. Uh, Peter's quite boring. He has scripted responses for everything. He says things like, building tomorrow, Sydney, integrated transport network, connecting the West, blah, 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 blah. Peter also rations his appearances at community events these days as well. I haven't seen him for a while. Okay, so on to the second part of my talk. Um, now that I got involved, I said, okay, what am I going to do now? I said, well, I've got to get up on stuff. I've got to work out when I get in front of these people, if I've got this big mouth and I'm supposed to use it, I need to be in front of people and find out what it is that I can actually tell them to make them a fool. And this has been the hardest part of my presentation because there is so much material out there. Seriously, it's not hard. There's just so much material out there. And, and Leslie said, we want to engage the people. We want to see if we can hook them on, on the journey. And I didn't want to include or exclude anything that might actually achieve that because everybody gets hooked in a different way. And so time permitting, uh, time isn't permitting for me to do everything, so I've actually focused on three things that actually made an impact on me and got me more enraged and more engaged. In the beginning, there was Tony Abbott 
and the majority, of the, the majority of the people thought he was good and anointed him king. Australia was now open for business. Tony quickly establishes the National Commission of Order to provide him with advice on stuff. He appoints Peter Shepard, that's the guy in the background, uh, and Peter Shepard just happened to be available at the time because he had just resigned from Transfield. Transfield. What is Transfield? Transfield is a really, really big infrastructure company with a history of toll roads and private public partnerships, Lane Cove Tunnel, Cross City Tunnel, Harbour Tunnel, and so on. They also have a sideline business in detention camps, but that's a story for another day. Suddenly, Tony wants to be the inferior, uh, sorry, the infrastructure prime minister. And the story goes that this epiphany moment came to him early one morning when he was watching his beloved ABC and a documentary called Bob the Builder. But I reckon that Peter may have planted a bit of a seed in his brain because all of a sudden they announce three troublesome triplets. They're love children, for want of another word. Melbourne East Link, East West Link, Perth's Row 8 and Sydney's West Connects. But there was a little body in their way called Infrastructure Australia. Now, Infrastructure Australia was set up to be an independently um, an independent government organisation that would assess infrastructure projects across the land and rate them on their merits. What did they think of the troublesome triplets? Bottom of the class. All rated low priority, not on the cards. So, what does Tony do? Well, <laughs> there must be a blockage, obviously. I'll shirt front the board, I will, I bet I am, I will. The suppository of all knowledge performs a life-saving enema, leaving only one ex-liberal minister behind as the chairman. He sprinkles a few prunes here and there, just for good measure, and suddenly we have movement out of that bothersome central orifice, and Tony's siblings are now top-rated, top of the class. This is a little incestuous family shot. Here we have, um, there's Tony Shepherd. There's their love children that they created. Now, what happens here is that um, this man talks to this man over here and says, hey, I've got some people who worked with my company up north once who actually did all the business cases up in Brisbane. And he goes, oh, that sounds good. Now, I know they're in court at the moment because they screwed up the figures and um, they're getting sued for about a quarter of a billion dollars, but they're good. Righto, we'll get them to do the West Connects business case. Now, this man, by the way, at that time, was he left the National Commission of Audit and he became the chairman of the West Connects Delivery Authority. Just coincidence. But he only stayed there for one year. He actually made this a private company called Sydney Matterways Corporation. Yeah? Because that stops them going to ICAC, nasty place, and also from you and me getting any freedom of information. Okay? So he leaves them. And he comes over here and becomes CEO of a football club. And they now announce their major sponsor. Yeah? And this football club just happens to be in this man's electorate, Stuart Ayres, who is now the minister for West Connects. It's coincidental. Hang on, hang on. We've heard about council amalgamations for Josepha. It's one of my, my pet hates. Once upon a time, there were three disobliging little councils. For some reason, they hated the idea of tunnels and chimneys dotted across their land. And here they are in their young, more petulant state. Oh dear, what shall we do? I know, Tony says to Mike. How about we amalgamate? Hmm, amalgamate. Here they are after their lobotomy in their new, more conformist state. Now, amalgamation can be a good thing. It drives reform, improves services, and it streamlines administration. It also, coincidentally, lines up perfectly with this. Stage one, stage two, stage three. And now for your viewing pleasure, folks, the fabulous Beaches Link. Yes. When the Beaches Link is, is actually up and running, these two chaps will be able to drive down the road under that hideous thing called the Inner West, I saw that it is, all the way down to the beaches down in Wollongong to surf to their heart's content. 
where are the goddamn sharks when you need them? So, at this moment in time, you're probably thinking what I was thinking. So what? I can't do anything about it. I'm just going to lay low and let the thing just kind of go over and everything will be done and dusted. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. You see, even if you don't want to use the toll road, even if we all don't want to use the toll road, you'd think it would just die off. It will be dead and buried. No, it won't. Because there are clauses in contracts inserted by the big players that says, if you don't pay, the government must pay. They actually subsidise if there's no usage. There is clauses in there that says you will not create any other alternate transport that may take away the traffic from our toll road. That's in there. When you create business cases, you will not put side by side comparisons with public transport because it makes our toll road look bad. That happened on the F6. And um, if you think, well, we'll just ride out the storm, we'll think again. The contract on the West Connects is there till 2060. I don't want to sound morbid, but you'll all be dead by then. <laughs> but your children will be just setting up for retirement. So, it's not just public transport that's affected. There are other things that are affected. We talked about people's health. Yes. That, uh, that, I did that when um, I heard that uh, we're going to get a, a road 180 centimetres from people's living rooms or bedrooms. 180 centimetres. If you can't visualise that, that's two plasma screens side by side. <laughs> I actually measured it at home. My partner was going, what are you doing? Never mind. It's not just other public transport. What about our other essentials, hospitals and education? You'll be, it'll be, it's weird to know that the annual budget for Australia, that means all of Australia, how much we spend on roads is $25 billion. That's how much we spend across Australia on roads, everything. This government is spending $17 billion on one road in one city and assigning a whole minister just to make sure it happens. And if you ever heard Stuart Ayres speak on radio, you can tell him that your house is on fire, your dog's been run over by a truck, and he'll say, and he'll say my job is to deliver West Connects on time and on budget. That is his first opening regard. He has no sentiment for anyone. Suck it up, this is happening, is what he'll say. But anyway, 17 billion, what does that buy us? Okay, if we wanted to put that elsewhere, I then did some research, 2016 figures. 17 billion dollars would have actually bought us the total capital funding works for the Department of Health for the next 11 years. 11 years. That's another one when they say we're going to have green space everywhere. I said, really? I can't wait. I love, I love having picnics by the, end, by the side of freeways. Just gets my juices running. This is the end part of the, my presentation. The magic West Connects button. It's not there. There's no button that we can press because if it was, you and I would have pressed it a hundred times over and that would be all rubbed out. You see, there is no single act, no event, no individual that can kill this beast. But whilst one little Indian with a bow and arrow can't do it, a whole tribe raining arrows can. And that's why we need to stand together as a community. The terrible triplets, two of them had died because of a state election. And the other one is actually got cracks in it. You're going to tell me, what is he talking about? They are actually so far along, there is no way that this is going to happen. And you would be doing exactly what the government expects of you because they're doing everything to perpetuate a belief that this is almost finished. That's the St. Peter's uh, construction spaghetti junction place. They're still remediating because it's polluted. They haven't actually started doing anything yet. But what they have done, and by the way, they're the actual dates at the bottom of when things were actually complete and they are the things that might happen right on over the side. You see, that gets released, stage one, stage two, stage three. By the time stage one is done, it's congested. And then they have a, a state election. Tolls are there and congestion. And then we go to the state election and then stage two comes online. This, the St. Peter's interchange. What this government has done is create a visual impact. It's gotten in your face. It's breaking your resolve. There was no need to head down Euston Road and chop down all these trees and widen it. Why? Because we haven't done anything yet. 
They haven't done anything yet. They don't need to go and cut down those trees yet. You don't need to widen it. You don't need to do any of that, but it creates a visual impact. Why? Because digging holes underneath the ground doesn't actually show anything. And getting up somewhere and saying, you know what? We've dug 200 metres. Today we've done 225. It doesn't actually do anything for the public, but that kind of stuff does. And that's why they do it. It's too late. We can't keep, we can't stop it. Cat's out of the bag. Move on. And what's their number one thing that they say? It's happening! Have you heard them say that? Especially Lucia Turnbull. Oh, it's all happening. It's all happening. Get used to it. It's happening. You can't stop this. You can. We need to get together. So how do we do it? The first opportunity comes in about four months' time. We have a council election. Getting a council that is actually anti-West Connect sends a very strong message. It's not going to stop the thing. It doesn't need to. It needs to send a message. God forbid you have a councillor with a blue tie on because they'll see that as a mandate from God himself. A blessing from the Pope and get some more bulldozers in here. They love it. So you need to be strategic. Red, green, blue, all neutral colour, whichever one you want to vote for, you need to make sure, if you don't want this, you need to be strategic and say, that candidate is anti-West Connects, that candidate sends a message to the people. Because to get to the state election, you, we want to get there with one very important thing, and that is that the incoming party, because that's the only one who's going to stop this, has a clear policy on what to do with this road. And the only way they can do that is they get onto a bandwagon where they see votes. They don't care. They just want to be elected. And we need to make sure that they make that policy. At the moment, that party, unfortunately, we're in Australia. It's two-party preferred sometimes. It's a party that looks good in red. They are uh, fence sitters. What they're saying is, stop the tolls. It's a good start. But then they need to move on to that. We've got to get them to a point where they feel they're going to lose seats and they are going to then say, this is not a good view for us. We need to be in opposition to this project. And that is the only way it's going to happen. OK, so individually, what can you do? I mean, all of us now, collectively. Well, each one of you has a skill that they can offer. I don't know what it is, but there's a skill there. It doesn't matter if you're a solicitor, it doesn't matter if you're a trader, it doesn't matter if you're a pleb. I'm a pleb. I didn't have any skills to offer, but someone told me that I, apparently I did, and I got involved. Now, you need to get involved. Please get involved. Just put your hand up and say, is there anything I can do? I, I would love to collaborate with other artists if, if they're out there. I would love to collaborate with them. I used to be a musician. I've written some songs. There's no time to show you or anything like that. But that's how I contribute. That's how I can contribute. But don't underestimate your talents. We need to bring the community together. They need to be together because it's the only way that we're going to defeat this. We have to stand united as one. Thank you very much.